Hi, this is Matt from Audio Plugin Deals. Today we're looking at the EQ Excellence bundle from Mastering the Mix. This bundle consists of the Bass Room and Mix Room plugins, and they're currently on offer, so let's have a look. So let's have a look at what they do. Bass Room and Mix Room are essentially EQs, but they go much further than that. And they're designed to work in conjunction with each other. So if we look at Bass Room first, you can see on the left and right here, we have the frequencies of all the bands, and we can see that Mix Room ends at 320 hertz. And then if we look at Mix Room, we can see that that takes over at 320. So as the name would imply, Bass Room looks after the bass frequencies and then Mix Room does everything above, which is why they work so well in conjunction with each other. Let's focus first on Bass Room. So the interface might be a little bit confusing initially. So if we take a standard EQ, like the one in Cubase as shown now, you have the bands from left to right, and if we make a cut like so, you can dip it down. And this, I think this is familiar to most people. But if you look at Bass Room and Mix Room, it's essentially flipped this, this axis here. It's flipped it from a X axis to a Y axis. So it's gone like so. And then the depth of the EQ is on the Z axis. So let's put this one down at, it's around 150 Hertz, as you can see here, 150. So I'm going to do the same thing on Bass Room, just to demonstrate. Well, this one is actually 180, but it's the same in concept. So if we pull this up, that's essentially boosting the frequency. So I would be doing this in Cubase. If I was to pull it down, then I'd be cutting the frequency like so. The frequency bands in Bass Room are fixed, so there's no possibility to move them left to right like so. But we can do that in Mix Room. So this one, if looking at the left, is at 3.8 kilohertz. So if we move this one to 3.8, around there, around 4, it doesn't really matter. And then if we move it left and right to change the frequency, that's essentially what this is doing here in Mix Room. If we were to pull it up, then we're boosting that frequency. Or if we pull it down, we're cutting that frequency just like so in Cubase. We can then change the Q on the Cubase EQ, like so, make it narrower or make it wider. And we do that in Mix Room by changing this slider here. So we're increasing the width or we can decrease it like so. So now that I've shown you that, let's proceed with some examples. Let's turn Mix Room off for now and we'll focus on Bass Room first. So rather than just be a simple EQ, this comes with various presets that should really be considered targets rather than presets. So if I play back this loop, it's just a trap loop that I made for a previous video. There's no EQ at all on the master, so I have no idea how that compares to professional tracks or industry standard tracks. However, if I was to choose a preset here, and we go to, we can choose any of these types of genres. So electronic hip hop, house, other, pop, R&B, rock, all of which have sub genres. The track that I'm working on, as you heard, is more of a trap track. So let's select trap. And then we'll play back the track for a few seconds and watch these little sliders on each of these bands move. So these lines here, these vertical lines, indicate the changes that I need to make in Bass Room to then resemble a industry standard trap track. So for example, if I need to increase this top band at 180 hertz, this means my frequency response in that band is currently underrepresented and I need to boost that, like so. Similarly, the one below, I'm also under a bit, but then if we look to the next one, I'm dramatically over in these bands, so I need to cut this. So I pull this down like so. Next one, I pull that down like so to match this line. And then the last one, the lowest one I pull down also. So now if I play back, I now have a frequency response that resembles the majority of trap tracks. So it's a very quick way to align your track to industry standard EQ curves for your intended genre. We can also change the Q settings by moving this dial here. So for the upper bands, I might want to decrease the Q to make that wider, like so. And then I'll do the same here for the very top one. And then I'll reduce it just a bit for the lower bands, just to make it a bit more focused.
And then once we've done that, we should go up to here to our level match. And you can see that we have a little yellow arrow here. And what this means is that, as you can see below, we've made quite a few cuts. We've made a couple of boosts, but mainly it's a lot of cuts, especially in the lower, the very low regions. So what that's done is essentially reduce the perceived loudness of this track. So we need to bring this back up to match it with a yellow dot. So now the perceived loudness is the same pre and post bass room. So now when I play this back, we have a perfectly level matched bass room curve. So let's turn it off first. Turn it on. And instantly you can hear the difference. It was so boomy before, but now it's really tidied up that low end. However, instead of using these predefined curves, like I said at the start, we can load a reference track like I've done here. Let's select the main section of the track like so and just drag the section that we want. So you want to use the section of the track which has the most energy in it. So you can see here by the curve, this is where the main body of the track is, either there or towards the end. But let's go here and then click on create targets and then we close and play this back again. And these lines will adjust once again. And interestingly enough, they have not changed significantly than what we had before, which tells me that the original trap setting that Mastering the Mix had included was actually quite close. But there's a little bit of adjustment required, so let's turn this one down, and let's turn this middle one up, the one at 40 hertz. And off. Way, way too boomy. Just make sure the level matching is okay. Just turn it down just a touch, like so. Okay, so that's sounding really good. So now that we've got our bass in order, let's go over to the higher frequencies and look at mix room. So once again, let's go to our genres. Let's choose trap as in the previous example. And then we go to these three little dots and then we do add smart bands like so. We can see there's been quite a bit of boosting. So we will need to go into our output gain and turn this down like so to match it with the little white dot there. So we can see there was a boost made at 10,000 hertz, there was another one at four, and then there was another one in the lower range around 800 or looks like 500 there. Let's turn this off. That opens up the high end so much more. Then instead of having the higher band do the full stereo spectrum, Let's unlink like so. Let's go side, we can click on side, and then we can process just the sides. So let's not do any processing in the middle, let's move it about there. And then for the band below that, let's do the same. Just go sides, and then we'll do a bit of a narrower band like so. So as we get further down the spectrum, we're processing more in the center, and as we get higher up, we're just doing the sides. So that's sounding much cleaner. Let's just do the same though. Let's choose our reference track. Let's choose the same range like so and do create targets. And we'll play this back for a bit. Let it have a chance to do its thing. So it's currently analyzing it. And you can see these lines have now appeared. So now we can do add smart bands like so. And now we have a boost at 15K, we have another boost at 4K, and then another slight boost at around 500 Hertz. Let's just make sure we're level matched. Let's turn this up to the yellow dot again. So 
So now if I AB with bass room and mix room on and off, let's go off first. So very muddy. It sounds horrible. Now let's turn them on. Let's just turn the high down a little bit. Let's put it only on the sides as per before. And off. On. Such a huge difference. And you saw how quickly and easy that was to get. So as I said in the intro, they're both currently on offer at Audio Plugin Deals. Go check them out. They have very quickly become invaluable in my studio from mixing sessions to mastering sessions. If you want to use it as an EQ like we've done in this example, or if you simply want to use it just as a reference to see what industry standard tracks sound like. There are several use cases for it and it sounds fantastic as you heard. Go check out the demo, see if it's for you, and then head over to Audio Plugin Deals. Thanks for watching and I'll see you next time. Bye bye.